Hi, welcome back to Cold KRC. So today we're going to have a look at this. This is the iFlight Cine B 4K. So unlike the, the, the do a HD version, this one's got the 4K camera on it. And yeah, I think it's 105 millimeters. It comes in this box here. Let me just show you. So this is the box it comes with. It comes with some battery straps, which I'll like talk about in a minute. It comes with this adapter, which you do need because you can't actually get in with the cable to plug it in to Beta Flight. Because if you look, it's down. I hope you can see that. Down there. So you put this adapter in and it allows you to plug, beta, yeah, plug it into Beta Flight with the cable at the top. You get that with you. You get some straps, like I mentioned. Some spare set of props. So these are. Dalpro props, you get a spare set of those, and the set it comes with, you get some stickers, because these things are just paper stickers that are probably going to come off and peel, you get some other stickers, don't know what they're for, set of hardware screws, and I did look at maybe we put, taking these off, the ducts off, and these screws do not fit the motors, they're too long, so if you want to take them off you're going to have to source your own screws or put washers on and then it comes with the board to connect the camera up to um, the board so you can adjust contrast and brightness and auto white balance and stuff not for the 4k camera that is for the camera for FPV you're probably thinking well, why because there's, there's two cameras on this thing not one so let me show you around it first so it's got Foxy lollipop on the rear. The camera on this, both cameras on this are very nice, but the camera for FPV is really nice. As you can see inside this side is the the front you've got your stack and in the back is for recording from the 4K camera. The little black cable you can probably see at the corner there is a Wi-Fi antenna, which I'll talk to you about in a second. Does it come with a LiPo? I've been flying this on a 3S650. It's a maximum of 3S this because it's got 8300 kV motors. The motors are a bit high. Why they didn't drop the motor size so you could have put um, a 4S on here, I don't know. To, this is the XM Plus version. To bind it, you are going to have to remove the top because you can't get to the bind button, but it's very easily four screwed. I think it weighs about 170 grams with the battery. So, in fact, I might be wrong there. Let's wait. Never easiest to see on the screen. So it's 108, sorry, without the LiPo, and I'm flying on this. You can fly it on 2S, and it's 159.7 with the battery on, so 160 grams. So it's not super heavy but it is heavy for, with the way it flies so this is not a speed demon do not get me wrong this is this is for filming decent 4k footage and getting that nice cinematic shots when you're flying slowly not for throwing about because it isn't that quick you'll be a bit surprised when you see the flight test to think how slow it actually is so this is the main event so this is the cadex tazier camera that's on the front these have been out now not that well not that long a couple of weeks or so and you've been able to buy these if I could get the cap this off, it's quite tight this to be honest. So there you go. So you've got two cameras. So one camera is for FPV and one is a 4K camera. The reason for that is you get zero latency because you're not trying to record through it, so you're gonna get a better FPV experience without losing it because you've recorded to the camera. The camera is a 4K one, and I said the, the normal camera is really nice as well. It's adjustable. I've undoed my screws slightly, you can adjust this up and down. The one bugbear I find about this, the way they designed this frame, you cannot get the camera straight. It's always going to have to be slightly up. If you look, that there needs is not really in the best position. A couple of things I don't like. I don't like the TPU mount that's holding this. I think it's pretty poor. The threads were already stripped in the two screws when I took them out the top. So they're not the best. Construction-wise, as you can see, it's a unibody with just ducts on so like I say if you can get different different screws which I probably will do I'll take it off and fly out the ducts on so the camera is obviously the main event on this so what I'm going to do now is 
rather than it take time right i'll just show you quickly so if you look under here it's difficult to show you but you'll see two buttons the first button there is your stop start record button and turn your, turn your recording off this auto starts recording when you put plug the battery in which i absolutely love because you haven't got to mess with that button at all the next button to it is to turn the wi-fi on and off you hold it in for seven to eight seconds a little green light will flash on the other side and it means it's in wi-fi mode so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi on now. I'm going to put a different battery in because it absolutely will destroy you. But this thing uses so much current for there that you can't be that long doing all this setup because it will over it comes up with an overheat warning on the OSD. So I'm going to use a different battery. This is just an old 2S, and I'll set it up to blue Wi-Fi, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've turned the Wi-Fi on now. So as you can see, I've got a flashing green light there. So that means it's in Wi-Fi mode. It, you only, it'll only turn on to Wi-Fi mode when you press that button. Next time you do it, the Wi-Fi will be turned off so it doesn't stay on all the time. So now it uses an app. So you need to go into your app, go into your Wi-Fi and find your Caddx camera. So you've got there's Caddx at the top, go into there. And then you need to download the Caddx FPV app. Now you need to do, this is what you need to use if you need to buy the camera separate. The camera's available on its own, I think it's around £80. I'm going to get another one probably and stick it on a plane because I do love it so much. I want to see what kind of video I get on a fixed wing. So if we go into the app, press enter to connect. Now this can take a few, uh, well, there's massive lag on this because it's not designed for flying, obviously it's designed to set it up. Oh, there's massive lag. So there you go. That's your camera image you get there. The reason I brought you in here is to show you everything. So on here is where you adjust everything. So your resolution, your video segment, how long you want it to be, your audio if you want it on and off, your video encoders, you can do it in 264 and 265. Your meter mode, you can adjust everything. Your white balance, your exposure, your ISO. Electronic image stabilization, do not turn that on. When you t I made the mistake of getting this, turning it on, and went out and flying it, and I had five and a half minutes of video that was complete garbage because it was that messed up, it was untrue. It was just jello, 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 jello. So do not turn that on because either it doesn't work yet because this is a new camera or you're just not meant to use it on this camera because I believe this will be for other stuff, this app. And your bit rate is here. You can adjust your bit rate, low bit rate, I think is 30 megabits per second, mid bit bit rate is 55 I believe when I checked it and high is 90 so you can adjust your bit rate on here and then if you go into device settings on the top mine came and it had start action was on loop video I have no idea why so I changed it back to aut uh, normal you've got your scene mode which you can adjust you can have personage scenery defog whatever that is here's your wi-fi connection your video standard ntsc or pal so in other words 25 frames a second or 30 in 4k mode inversion mode so you can put the camera the other way around and then you've got sd format etc so if i go back into let's go back into here again so this is your settings you've got you've got 4k 30 2.7k 60 14 40 60 14 40 30 1080, 90 and 1080, 60. So there's quite a lot of um, different settings on here. Obviously, most people buying this drone, me included, bought it to film in 4K. So I've just put it in 4K. But when I do the flight footage at the end, you're going to see some flight footage at the end. Because that's what most people want to watch video for, see what the camera looks like. And I'm going to be filming in 4K 30 on the flight I do. But I'll probably start, I'll probably do another video on this and I'll probably go through the settings. I'll fly in 1080p, 90, 60 and 2.760 so you can see the difference. But the video today will be in 4K 30. So there's a lot of things you can adjust and I do like the app. It's just weird connecting like something like this up to a camera if you put it that way around you do get full image with a full screen image but like I say you get like it's a bit like the app you'd find for a toy grey drone I suppose so that's how you set it up it's as simple as that what I will tell you if you buy this drone quad whatever you want to call it it comes with absolutely no manual there's nothing about it. instructions it doesn't tell you the camera how to do this setup how to connect it to wi-fi anything i found out how to do the settings because albert kim had done a great video on the camera so i watched his camera video and then i worked it from there setting it up on beta flight was easy obviously it was just a straightforward setup 
So I've got this set up in stability mode and acro trainer. They're the only things I set it up in because I don't want to go crazy with this thing. And that's all I set up and it's got a buzzer. But apart from that, I set nothing else up on it. It's red hot. I can assure you this frame is red hot now from being on here a couple of minutes. So one of the other things that's really poor is this is the battery strap that come with. I've actually got two straps joined together if you can see it. I've got a different strap. I'm going to actually replace the strap but I wanted to get it up in the air. So this is the battery the advice to use. The 653 SI I already had one. This is a tattoo battery. I already had some of these. But this is a brand new battery I put on it to fly it and if you use the original strap it does not fit. And all the straps that come with it are exactly the same size which is a bit bizarre but this is what we've got. So you have to either join two together like I did or alternatively which is what I'll be doing is putting another strap around it. Also the strap comes up here if you can see through these holes but the battery is actually wider so what you're trying to do is you're actually trying to push it off the base when you tighten it up so the strap I fit on will go all the way around not through the slots so there's the winch over the other things this comes with this TPU mount here and the, the antennas come in the box you just push them over the, the antenna wires one side fitted one side was nowhere near because they hadn't made this hole anywhere near big enough on this side so i had to take it out fit the cables out drill it out really not that impressive um and the reason i might whinge about these little things this thing costs 200 quid so it's not exactly cheap it's not bargain basement this is a very expensive drone quad um but it just little bits are not great and the other thing is that I don't know how much, I noticed this on Andy RC's video for this, but the ribbon, the cameras in can go in either way because you can invert it. They've put the camera in this way around, but the problem is, as you can see, it's got the cable there. So if you did land this hard, it is lower, I'll be honest, it is lower, but I tend to agree with what Andy said that that's too near the base for any landing or anything. So I'll, enough of that, I'm going to get on with the main thing, I'm going to show you the video, I'll probably record it with a couple of cameras, I'll probably record it, um, I might even record the OSD as well, but the main thing you're going to see is the footage from here, because that's what you'll want to see. And I've had a quick fly of it, it didn't help yesterday because when I had a quick fly of it, it was a very dull day, and you're going to get, and 4K on a dull day is not the best kind of test, but it looked impressive like I say, not a speed demon. So, thanks ever so much for watching. I'll leave you with the flight footage and have a fantastic day. Okay, so this is the footage recorded from the 4K Tazier camera and the inset is the footage recorded from my goggles using the other camera. They've got, my, the FXT goggles, one thing that lets them down is the DVR because the screen recording doesn't look great on there, but trust me, the camera is fantastic. The colors pop, they're very vibrant and it's a fantastic thing to fly with. So you can see the video footage looks decent but it's also probably the sunniest day of the year I decided to fly into and it's very hazy but it does look actually better if you get not as much sun to be honest but it does look good so much better than as you can see what you normally get and it really is a joy to fly even though it's not a performance quad it doesn't go you can't fly it hard but very easy to fly FPV, extremely easy, it'll just stay in the air, it seems to want to stay where it is. So yeah, nice enough picture quality, hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. I've left the sound in, so you might have to turn your speakers down, rather than put music over the top, just so you can hear what it records like from the audio on the camera.
So thanks for watching my channel. If you like the video, please subscribe and hit the like button and also hit that notification bell. There's plenty more good stuff coming up. 